So today we are going to be creating this awesome looking animation. It has gold particles, it has glass backgrounds and cool stuff like that. And I just generally think it looks very fine. So let's get started straight away. I am in this blend file right now. We have our microphone. Now what I want to do is animate a camera, which I'm going to bring in right now. Shift A camera. Let me also turn on the screencast keys. I'm hoping I'm not talking too fast for you because I am for me. There you go. And now you can see exactly what I'm doing on the screen. Now, what I want to do is animate this camera based on an empty. I think that's a very fine technique if you want to have those cool 3D looking animations. So let's go over here to this empty, Shift S, cursor to select it. Let's add in a new empty. I like using the sphere. I'm going to bring sphere right over there. Then I will select the camera, select the sphere last, Control P and object keep transform. Now what happens if we scale this sphere, then the camera is going to come along. If we rotate it, the camera is going to be rotated. So all we have to do now is make sure that our camera is in a logical first place. I'm going to set it to 85 millimeters. Zoom it out, something like this. And now we can basically play around with this empty in order to make a very cool looking animation. And that's basically what I'm going to be doing right now. Uh, as you remember from the previous shot, we were kind of zooming into this and it's turning into a shadow. We could do another lighting animation, but I'm kind of done with that. So let's just make a cool motion animation. Uh, first of all, I'm going to open up the timeline right here. Timeline, go to the first frame and now I'll find a spot that I think looks very good. So I will go over here. Maybe I'll even rotate it like so. Uh, our CZ, RZ, rotate it like this. We can even move this empty if we like to do that. I don't know if I'm going to do that right now. Maybe I will. Just do something like this, press I. Then go to frame 72, it's going to be 72 frames. And then I will move this backwards, like so. I will also scale it out. I will rotate it. I will rotate it on the Z axis. And I want it to be completely visible, like something like this, perhaps. And also in the middle. And press I. Let's see what that looks like. Oof. I think that looks pretty cool. Of course, we need to change the graph editor. So let's go into the graph editor. Let's select all of this. I will normalize it a dot. And I will simply make this a fast animation in the beginning and have it slow down over time. Nothing too crazy, something like this. But I also wanted to go faster near the end. So I'm going to take this left handle and place it all the way over here. And if this is looping nicely, then you know you've done something correct. Now you can always make changes to this animation, but I just want to keep going and show you guys exactly how to make the background. So I'm going to add a mesh plane, scale this up, bring this down, and now let's Bring this up as well. Make sure that it's covering the entire screen all the time. So right here, that's not the case. I'm going right here. By the way, the HRI I'm using is JHB Central. Uh, I don't think it has to be turned on, but we'll figure it out later on. So now we have a plane. I will also add this bevel right here, as I always do. Shade it smooth, then go over to the shader editor. Click on new, make this black increase the metallic and uh, play around with the roughness stuff like that so now we have a black background very fast uh, hoppa. all right all right all right looks pretty cool looks pretty cool now there's two more things that we need to do we're going to have particles move over a trail and we're also going to add some glass type of effects that look very cool for the background so let's do that first uh, because it's easy we're going to add a mesh cube let's scale it on the x-axis scale it on the y-axis let's bring it back Let's add a new material to this. And what do you know? It is going to be a glass BSDF. Who would have guessed that? BSDF into the surface and play around with the roughness and the IOR. But I find that we have a lack of light in here. So I will make a very quick lighting setup so it makes a bit more sense. Let's add a light, area light. Let's place this one over here. Yeah, let's make it bigger, a little bit stronger. Move it backwards. Uh, let's add another one. Let's do it over here. Let's make it very big just to fill in some of those shadows right there. Doesn't have to be too much. Very cool. Let's duplicate that. Let's go into this mode. Let's place it on the back. 
of this model and we can also make it a tad bit smaller and perhaps rotate it around to make it come a bit from the top like so very cool very cool uh, so that's those three lights so i'm simply going to add those in their own collection i'm going to call it light links mics and then i will go into lumio right over there make sure that our microphone is also in its own collection so select hierarchy m i'm going to call it drop the mic now we'll go into lumio light linking at our Let's see which one is it light links mics and the drop the mic right there at light linking and now it should only work on our model and we can toggle this on and off to see if it's working and it is of course now that we have this let's scale it up like so we can also open the acri browser and perhaps increase the strength a bit we need some more light in the back here so i'm going to add a point light let's go over there increase the power and the exposure until we get something that's kind of cool looking maybe something like this because we want to have a taste of this glass you know what i'm saying so i'm going to place this to the side let's open the modifier let's add an array and let's make sure the distance is slightly more than this and let's go ahead and increase that by a bit s and c to scale it up all the way let's go into the camera i will also make sure that the view purpose play is set to passepartout right here in the camera and now we have this cool glass background but i think the reflections are a bit too much so i'll go into the glass bsdf and increase the roughness ever so slightly and now let's have a look pretty nice pretty nice uh, what we can also do is take this glass let's move it to the front oh i also got the plane let's take this glass duplicate it move it to the front let's remove the array like so and let's add a bevel and this will change the shape and the way it looks right here so let's increase this and uh, play around with this until you get something that you think looks pretty cool and now you can select this place it in front of the camera it's like somewhere over here and that will give it a depth perspective what i'm going to do is click on the camera go into the camera settings and click on depth of field now for the depth field object, we want to use something close to the mic or on the mic. Uh, so in this case, the mic is not really moving. So I'm going to add a empty arrow, because that way I can see which one it is. Click on the camera. For the depth of field focus on object, I'm going to click on our empty X. And I accidentally selected an area lamp. It should be an empty. There you go. And now we'll place this on the front of this model so that that is absolutely in focus. And if we play around with the depth of field, you will be able to see that the background as well as the foreground is going to be slightly blurred. Now you can place as many of these as you like. I'm for now just going to continue with this tutorial because we need to make some gold particles that are swirling around or flying inside of the screen looking very cool. So let's add a curve. I like using the path. I'm going to bring it right in there. Make sure you have the overlays turned on, otherwise you won't be able to see the path. I will actually delete everything except for one. So now we have this and I can now decide exactly what this will look like. So I will simply move myself along this object while pressing E, like so, moving upwards to get this swirling type motion. All right. Something like this. And I can't even see what I'm doing, but I just know it's good enough. So it's experience. All right. So right here, I will place the 3D cursor. Shift S, cursor to select it. Let's bring in a mesh UV sphere. Let's scale this down. And this is going to be our particle emitter. So if we go to the particle system, click on plus, we have a particle system, and then it will emit particles very good now these are not the type of particles that we want to emit so let's make a collection first of gold dust i'm going to add a mesh icosphere right over there and i will click on new in the shader editor give it some type of goldish color make it metallic decrease the roughness and shade it smooth now i will also make sure to turn on proportional editing go into edit mode and just switch this up a bit just make sure 
it looks a bit more particle like particle like particle like all right so something like this just switch those around and i will also duplicate it make it very small because i want different sizes for the particles without having to play around with the scale randomness too much so right over here i will do this and uh, change the shape and now we have four of those uh, maybe change the shape of this one as well four of those select all of these press m to make a new collection i'm going to call it gold particles very good let's move them to the side so we so they don't hinder our vision let's click on the particle system let's go to render instead of halo select collection and increase the scale randomness select the collection gold particles and pick random and then we will have a particle system that is spawning gold particles i still think they are a bit too large so i'm going to decrease the scale by a whole lot and then i will turn on the children set it to simple because interpolated doesn't work on emission objects only simple works and uh, you need to play around with the display and make sure that the render is the same as the display amount that's very important otherwise you're going to get some very weird looking results uh, either way we have our particle system Click on the path, uh, go to this physics properties tab and add a force field. I'm simply going to keep it at force, but I will increase the flow to 10. Let's go into the particle system. In the field weights, let's turn off gravity. All right, so now it's going to move outwards all this time. Click on the path, go to the physics properties. And for the strength, decrease it to minus 100, simply so we can see what happens. And I feel like I am forgetting a step, and that is the case because the shape is set to point it should be set to curve because we are working with a curve and now all of these particles will follow this path of course the strength is way too much so i'm just going to set it to minus 0.5 or something or minus 5 and that will make sure that all of these particles are moving on the path now they are not living long enough these are some very volatile creatures and we need to make sure to extend their lifetime so go into the particle system and increase the lifetime. I don't care how long it is, 300 is probably fine. Now we can click back on our force field, go to the physics properties tab and increase the noise. And this will make sure that we have a slightly different motion going on here. If you like to do that, you don't have to do that. I just think it looks slightly better. Very cool. Now, if you want it to be faster in the beginning, that's also possible. Simply go over here because right now there are barely any particles and we can also see where they are spawning from. We definitely don't want to have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and move it outside of the screen. Then I will go into the line, shift S, cursor to select it, take the ball, selection to cursor. And right now we will have something that is impossible to see uh, in the screen. So that's very nice, uh, but it's not coming far enough. So what I want to do is select the force field, go to the very first frame, and let's increase the power of the force to like minus 60, and press I, and then on frame 14, it could be like minus 10. So in that fashion, we will have the particles in the screen already. They are gold and amazing looking. Oh, and now we do have this ball still in the screen right here. So we should probably fix that later on. I'm not going to bother you with it right now. Uh, but this will make sure that we have our gold particles and you can make them as fast as you want. Or what you can also do is shift the entire animation. So if you click on this and take all of these properties, then you can have the particle system start first. There you go. The particle system is already over there. And now it is doing the animation. And then you will have the gold particles circling around the microphone already. So if you want to have that, you can definitely do that as well very easily. And that's basically all I had to teach you in this tutorial. So we made use of an empty to swirl around the microphone using a cool 3D camera animation. We added some glass type backgrounds and foregrounds in order to get this cinematic type of quality, this effect where you have the blur. And then we also added a particle system that's following a path. So considering all of this, I hope you learned a lot. And if you did, click on subscribe and I will see you in the next one.